Sustainability must be a priority from the start, not an afterthought. If you have the right ideas, you find the ideas that will advance the company and you pursue them relentlessly, others will want to come to your table. I think this is our biggest challenge as a society and as a planet, and we need to do more and we need to do it faster. Our approach to sustainability is rooted in our own strategy and our commitment to be a net zero enterprise across our entire value chain by 2040, with near terms by 2030. Reality is making sure that you have the infrastructure in place that gives you that visibility that you get both the business benefits and the sustainable IT benefits as well. It's not just good for planet, it's good for business. We have got one planet and we're all responsible. We're organizing a roadmap to best position our customers to not only understand, but also decrease the footprint associated with their IT estates. So when you think about customers who are really interested in how they can be sustainable, this is where we give equipment first, second, and third lives. Sustainability is a collective effort, and we need everyone to not just join in the conversation, but to convert that to action. I'm proud to work at HPE because I truly believe that technology and innovation are the best and biggest ways that we can create a positive impact on the world. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for getting up early in Vegas to join us on a topic that we're hearing is increasingly important to our customers, but also increasingly complex and confusing. So in just a moment, we're going to have a panel of HPE leaders join us on stage with one of our fantastic customers to talk through their experiences from sustainable IT deployments around the world, as well as learnings from our own sustainability journey. But for me personally, I've always had this knack for solving these sorts of messy challenges like sustainability. But I realized really early on in my career that I wasn't problem agnostic. I care a lot about what it is I'm solving for. And I believe there's no greater or more important challenge for us to tackle than the climate crisis. And the reality is that significant change is in the hands of very few people. And among them are the executives and business leaders in this room with the power to transform industries, to innovate new technologies, and to uncover new and better ways of doing business. And in fact, one of the reasons I chose to work for HPE is because I believe that technology is the key to unlocking a more sustainable future. And that's because the magnitude of the challenge facing society today is so great that it requires the type of rapidly scalable innovation that only technology can deliver. Now, I know what you might be thinking. That's inspiring, but I've got critical business goals to deliver. Well, then you'll be pleased to know that sustainability can actually be a catalyst for those business objectives. Don't take my word for it. Research from Accenture actually shows that companies that link together their digital and sustainable transformations are two and a half times more likely to be among the strongest performing businesses of tomorrow. And the work we do at HPE isn't only transforming our own company, it's helping others to transform as well. So yesterday, hopefully you all heard Antonio talk about how sustainability is and always has been at the forefront of our, uh, of our innovation agenda. Earlier this month, we launched a portfolio of new and enhanced sustainable IT services spanning operations, strategy, and IT asset lifecycle management that will make it easier for you to advance your sustainability strategies from the data center to the workload. Through our expanded partnership with Equinix, we're making it faster, easier, and more sustainable to deploy HPE GreenLake in your location of choice. And we're offering HPE GreenLake for large language models, hosted in AI-native data centers, powered by nearly 100% renewable energy, and available to you on demand. Now, we know it's important that HPE also walk the talk ourselves. So you heard Antonio share that we've actually agreed to accelerate our net zero commitment, our commitment to being a net zero enterprise by an entire decade from 2050 to 2040. And we're one of only two global IT companies to have a target of 2040 or sooner approved by the science-based target initiative. 
And essentially what that means is it validates that it aligns with climate science and best practices. And it also validates that we are not buying our way to carbon reductions by purchasing offsets. We're committed to doing the hard work and driving the meaningful reductions that will move HPE and our entire industry towards zero. Now what's important to note about all this is that the most significant impact HPE can make is delivering sustainable IT solutions to our customers. And that's because the vast majority of our carbon footprint is actually outside of our direct control. So two thirds of our footprint is generated by customer use of our products, two thirds. The other third is almost entirely upstream in our supply chain. That means that HPE can't get anywhere close to zero without actually first solving for our customers' sustainable IT needs. And the scale of the transformation ahead of us is so large that it requires us to rely on innovative partnerships across our entire value chain with our suppliers, with our customers, even with our peers and competitors to decarbonize our grids and to deliver carbon reductions from every angle. It's also really invigorating to see the number of people here in this room and all the stakeholders outside this room working together every day to tackle the enormous challenge and opportunity that decarbonization presents. So as a global technology company, HPE is uniquely positioned to reduce the environmental impact of technology while reaping the positive transformative impacts that technology can deliver. It's something that HPE has been focused on for decades, and we are building one of the most innovative and sustainable IT portfolios in the industry. It's something that the entire company is focused on in every single business unit. And that's not just because it's a moral imperative, it's because we're no longer living in this world of speeds and feeds that we're competing on, but rather one in which our customers and our partners, all of you, are telling us that you need the partners and the solutions and the expertise to advance your own sustainable tech transformations. But as IT leaders, we're grappling with really complex challenges. How do you maintain an innovation advantage and build a sustainable future in a resource-hungry hybrid IT world. So with that in mind, I'm gonna ask you to participate in a quick one-minute exercise with me. I want you to think about your organization's technology infrastructure from edge to cloud. Think about all the data centers, the servers, the networking equipment, and all your other devices. Now I want you to think about how much energy it takes to power and cool all of that tech. I want you to think about the number of assets that you have sitting idle. What's underutilized? What's over-provisioned? How many workloads do you have running? I want you to think about your growing demand for compute resources and the power, the space, and the cooling constraints that your organization might hit as you scale your IT to meet those business demands. Now I want you to think about what you're doing right now to optimize your energy consumption and to reduce the environmental impact of your IT estates. You're probably doing some things, but is there more that you could be doing? And are you thinking about it the right way? Are you considering all of the changing dynamics? Environmental, regulatory, resource demands, advanced technology. Well, that is where our panel comes in today. So I'm gonna be joined by leaders from across HPE who spend their days engaging with customers on these very topics, who will hopefully share some guidance on where you can get started on your own sustainable IT journeys or wherever you are as well as a fantastic customer who's gonna share the innovative things that he's leading within his own organization. So with that, please welcome to the stage our featured guest, Sune Bastrop, the CIO and SVP of Danfoss, 
a fantastic example of a company that is using sustainability as a catalyst for their business. And from HPE, please also welcome Sue Preston, Jerry Gold, and Krista Satterthwaite. Thank you, sir. So, Sune, we're going to start with you. Gartner says that 86% of business leaders see sustainability as an investment which protects their organization from disruption. And four out of five leaders indicated that sustainability helped reduce their organization's costs and optimize those costs. So why should CIOs drive sustainable IT initiatives? And what do they need to become better enablers of sustainability? Right, thank you. First of all, thank you for being on your panel here. I think this is a, a super thing that we all have a major influence on uh, as leaders, right? So I think the, the short answer would be because this is important. It's important for our people in the organizations we work with, it's important for our companies, and it's important for our planet, right? I think the little longer and more detailed answer to that would be that at least we have a twofold responsibilities as CIOs, but also as IT professionals. Since many years, we have been driving you know, the digital transformations within our company. That means that we are on top of our business processes. We know exactly what is going on in our companies. Sustainability is a team sport across all of those business processes. That puts us at the center of where we have influence to actually drive a sustainable journey within our companies. And this is all about data. I think the other thing where we have a major influence as IT leaders, as experts, that's on the energy consumption. So there are a number of research that shows that, you know, with generative AI and the continuous use of digital technologies, our electricity demand within the total IT sector could be as high as 20% by 2025. You know, that would be 5.5% of our carbon footprint worldwide. So what is it that we can do as CIOs, as IT experts, to make sure that we lower that demand, that we optimize the way we run IT? It's all of our hands, and it's us who can do that difference. I think that's why it's important for us. Yeah, what I love about what you said is how efficiency goes hand in hand with carbon reduction, right? Which means that carbon reductions goes hand in hand with cost reductions. So we're doing it because it's a responsibility and an imperative, but it also helps lead to all of our business outcomes as well, right? Yeah. So this next question is gonna be for the rest of the panel. You're all consistently or, uh, engaging with really complex, large organizations around the world. How often is sustainability coming up in those engagements? And what challenges are you hearing from our customers? So I'll start, Monica, great question. So um, I engage with lots of customers and partners uh, around the globe. And sustainability is top on the agenda. And the maturity of where customers and organizations are is hard to define. Because it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge, we've all agree. Uh, our customers and partners can drive, drive change. So within HPE Services, I'm delighted that the teams can help look at that maturity assessment of where organizations are. And that's broken down into different modules. The other element that I see when I'm engaging with customers is consensus. Because there's different personas in the organization that are taking responsibility, and I call them the heroes. And then it's how do we drive that ambition and bring the whole organization together to achieve that goal and demonstrate a path on how to achieve and how to address the challenges. Absolutely, yeah. Something we find is a challenge is that sustainable IT is not necessarily anyone's job, yeah. which means it doesn't get done, yeah. which means it needs to be everyone's job in the organization to drive forward. So Jerry, how about you? What are you hearing from customers? It's every conversation. Every conversation I have starts with the conversation of sustainability. And how do I start? What do I do? Now, they may be, as you said, along the journey, but the question always is, what's next? Either how do I start or what's next? The second thing I find, and it's beautiful, it's perfect for this conversation, the, everybody says to me, listen, wherever we start or wherever we continue, we have to show not only a sustainable result, but an economic result. That's where you're gonna get the real support from the organization. 
And then the third thing, and I saw this uh, actually yesterday in a number of my conversations, partners and customers say, can you give me some best practices? Even better yet, can you partner with me with another customer or partner who has some stories that they can share? So Suna, thank you for being here today because this is a great example, right, of sharing a best, a best practice. And what we often like to do is say, listen, you talked about legacy estate in the beginning, and you said everybody has a legacy estate that they're dealing with. They are, um, typically, it is sucking up your budget with all the capital that you're depreciating, and it's often not sustainable. So what we like to do is recommend that you look at this legacy estate and use it as a way to not only monetize and help you transform, but to also make it sustainable by leveraging multiple reuse options, which keeps it in the circle longer. And that is a great strategy because it's an additive or an anchor to anything else you're gonna do. So it's a, it's a complex soup, but customers really need help and it's a great way to start. Yeah, when you say monetize your assets, we actually share the value of the remarketed and refurbished assets back with customers, we right? Absolutely and do. So when and we'll, you know, I'm sure we'll get to talk about it a little bit more, but when we take assets back, we want to make a second life for them. And when we're making a second life for them, we're able to monetize them and share in that revenue back with you. And you can use that as a way to help accelerate your transformation in essence adds to your existing budget. Great, thanks. So Krista, sort of same question to you. What strategic imperatives are you hearing from customers as well? Yeah, so it's really interesting because right now we're doing a lot of research for next generation servers. So we're talking to customers about sustainability a lot. And what I see is that people are on two different ends of the spectrum. We have customers that are really aware, they have goals that are public, and they know exactly what they need to do, and they know where every watt is, and very, very advanced. And then we have people that have some goals at a corporate level, but they don't really know how to get there and that they don't really have a plan. One customer said, hey, you know, sustainability, it doesn't mean much to me, but it means a lot to my company. And they love that, so throw in as much of that as you can. <laughs> so they weren't exactly tied in to the mission of the company. I don't think they really knew how they were going to contribute to it. Um, and then certain industries like service providers are particularly advanced when it comes to sustainability. They're a lot of times the ones that understand how every watt is being spent in the data center. I love that, absolutely. So Sune, from your own experience, can you talk a little bit about what Danfoss is doing? Where have the successes been? What challenges have there been? Absolutely, thank you. So, you know, we're a global engineering manufacturing company within Danfoss, and uh, we're relentlessly working on an everyday basis to make sure that we have the most relevant portfolio to decarbonize together with our customers. And today we decarbonize some of the most heavy industries in the world, mining, agriculture, construction, and data centers. So, um, and what we're experiencing is that our customers are asking us to show transparency, to make sure that we together go down that road, that we decarbonize the industries that we collaborate on. So um, years back when we sat in Danfors and had a look at our infrastructure, more than 100 manufacturing sites worldwide, we realized that we had to consolidate those sites and we put up an ambitious plan for being carbon neutral in what we do. So as a company, we are also committed to carbon neutrality and we are committed to be that by 2030 and we're good on our way as a company to go there. So actually what you see here on the screen is our, one of our very large campuses in Denmark. It's a manufacturing campus. Already last year, we achieved carbon neutrality on that manufacturing car, uh, site. And 25% of the heat that we use on that site on an annual basis comes through the reuse of heat coming out of our own data centers. So, um, you know, what goes into a data center is electricity, and energy can't be destroyed, right? It just changes form. What comes out of a data center is heat, and that, that's the heat, heat reuse uh, that we also specialize in together with HP. So, um, we went through a three step model here, uh, and I think we all have to go through that three step model. We call it the three R's. It's reduce, reuse, and then resource. We start with reducing the energy consumption that we have in the data centers. A large part of the energy consumption is cooling. Modern cooling technologies like our turbocall technology can reduce traditional cooling needs with approximately 50%. So the greenest energy is you know, the energy that, that we actually don't use, right? 
The next step is about reusing. So we reuse the heat coming out of the data centers. So, and uh, we could put that into the society around us. We could make sure that we heat our campus like we do here in this one. So, and that's, you can say, that's the cheapest energy that we have because we already have it at hand, right? And the last step it is about resourcing. So making sure that the energy that we consume in our IT industry is solar, it's wind. So, and actually there is a study that shows that the two first steps are half the cost of supplying green. And we need to supply green, but a part of funding that journey is about of making sure that we reduce and reuse our energy. So back in 2018, when we sat down with HP and the services team and the financial team, we thought about how can we do this? So we built these modular data centers, uh, which you see here uh, in, in our campus in Nordborg, and we made sure that we consolidate into Equinix data centers in Asia and here in the US. So today, we have a very strong platform with the Green Lake services that spans across all those three regions, and it's energy optimized. And I think that, that that is what we can do together, right? That, that is something that immediately have created business value for us, and it's something that is scalable and we consume it as a very robust service uh, out of the HPE portfolio. And I think the other example that I would like to mention is the recycling and upcycling of assets that you shortly spoke to, right? We're working with HP Financial Services in this, and you know, it feels good that you know that your assets are being reused, or if they have to be disposed, that you know where they're going, it's secure. So I think that that's the second part that I want to mention here today, and then go read the HP Sustainability Report. For me, it was a great joy having a look into it. There's so much inspiration in that report. And uh, at the end of the day, the collaboration that we have have freed up our resources to focus on our core business, and it has been driving our sustainability agenda at the very same time. Absolutely. Thanks for the Living Progress Report plug, hp.com slash info slash report. Um, but what I think is so important about what Sude is talking about is if you think about this holistic picture that they're looking at. They're not looking at efficiency within the traditional data center boundary, like a PUE metric, right? They're thinking of everything from the inputs, from the source, what is that energy source, through to the waste and how that can be reused. And that's not just reuse of assets, that's actually reuse of heat waste. So they're really trying to close the loop across their entire data center, which is pretty incredible. So Sue. As I mentioned earlier, we recently announced a portfolio of new and enhanced sustainable IT services. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about how HPE can help our customers to transform their IT? Yeah, fantastic. And thank you, Sune, because with the services engagement with Danfoss has been fantastic to see. So that's a you know, great, great example. <clears throat> so I was delighted with the services. So we've not um, introduced new services. What we've done is we've modernized some of the existing services. So if you look at the edge to cloud um, adoption framework, if we focus pan HPE, so with a customer where they're looking at the edge, the workloads, where they're running those workloads, looking at sustainable data center modernization, we have a framework that we can engage with customers and break that down into eight domains because it's people process, it's how you transform your operating model to achieve the um, sustainable outcomes, IT sustainable outcomes. The other interesting thing as well is we have um, Right Mix Advisor. So at a workload level, looking at the energy consumption and the carbon offset, we can now provide um, a report that details your um, offending workloads. So some customers will say, we'll focus on those top 10, and those are the things that we'll address. And I think HPE IT as well, we're our own use case where we transformed and consolidated, you know, thousands of applications, consolidated data centers down to two data centers and achieved, you know, savings on carbon, off, uh, carbon emissions by up to 75, 80%. So that's how we engage, taking what we've done internally at HPE, what we've done with our customers, and then bringing that out in an advisory um, perspective to our customers. Absolutely, and you're not just optimizing for sustainability, right? You're integrating into a framework that looks at resiliency and cost and sustainability yeah. and how to balance all these factors without sustainability being a trade-off for one of these others, right? Absolutely, and then I think with some customers, you know, how are you funding some of those programs and initiatives? So again, looking at, you know, heritage and what needs to be transformed, working with 
um, HP Financial Services, it's a fantastic way that we can simplify and engage with our customers and partners. Absolutely. One nice transition to Jerry. Jerry, can you tell us a little more about what you're doing from HP Financial Services perspective? Well, right now we've got this great force for good financing program. We want to help customers transition to a more sustainable model that's also economic. So for our SMB and enterprise customers, we're providing a better rate if they demonstrate their whole commitment to sustainability. And the way we measure that is through industry standard indexes, sustainability or ESG indexes, such as uh, DMB and CDP. And what's really great about this is that not only do you get a lower rate for doing that, but if you are migrating to a Gen 10 plus or a Gen 11, that is more energy efficient, we go one step further in driving a lower rate. So the whole point is we are trying to demonstrate and we're trying to put out there this combination of what you started, which is more economic and more sustainable. They go hand in hand. And thanks to my partners here, because all of you were involved in developing this program. So it's really great. Yeah, and it's amazing how we're using the breadth of our capabilities, right? We're using our expertise in services. We can even use our financing arm to drive our sustainability agenda. And then, of course, our actual solutions and hardware. So, Krista, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Sure. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what you can do when it comes to hardware. So, first of all, you have to know where you are. So, we do have power calculators before you bought, buy so you could see exactly how much power everything you're choosing takes. Um, we have carbon footprint reporting as well, so you can track how you're doing. And also make sure you're um, tuning in to Fidelma's keynote, where she's going to talk a little bit more about that at 10 o'clock. Um, and then when it comes to the servers themselves, uh, as Jerry mentioned, we have more power efficient servers now. We have ProLiant Gen 11 right now, and it's so funny because when I visit customers, a lot of them want to hold on to their old servers. And we're in a room and they want to tell me about their old server, and then they're like, do you want to see it? And I was like, okay, I want to see it. So we're going to the data center, and they point it out, and they're pointing to the rack, and it's always in the bottom of the rack. This server has been running for 15 years. They're excited, they're proud. I'm excited, I'm proud, because I was a product manager for that server 15 years ago, and we're having a moment. But <laughs> the truth is, that server is no longer serving them the way it should be. It is not delivering the performance they deserve for the power that it's taking. So when you think about it, every server needs to earn a spot in your data center. There shouldn't, it shouldn't be that it's sucking up all this power but not delivering the performance that you need. And there's been massive improvements generation over generation. If I just go back a few generations, when, when it comes to power and how much it's consuming, for the same amount of performance, that server that we sold a few generations ago, um, you could get 65% less energy to deliver that same level of performance. So you can save 65% on your energy costs. So those old servers are costing you not just power, but also space because you don't need so many servers. You can consolidate if you refresh. So a lot of people don't realize how much the advancements are, but we do have a business value calculator. So you can plug in what you have and how much it saves you if you upgrade. And you know what? You can take those servers and I'll find another life for them. Yes. And what we do find is it may be a Gen 8 or Gen 9, mm -hmm. but that's a lot more sustainable and a lot more data secure than your Gen 6s. Yes. So there's, there's just so much opportunity yes. to keep getting better at what you're doing. Yeah, and something we suggest to our customers is before you undertake that initiative, well, first measure so that you can show the value of the before and after state, right? But then also make an agreement with your finance organization upfront that the savings that you get from energy efficiency improvements and from the asset upcycling, you get to keep 50% of what you bring back in terms of savings and use that to fund your next innovation. So just a little tip to keep that in mind, but kind of before you start, make sure that you understand how you can sort of reap the value Absolutely. and bring that back into your IT organization. So we've talked about sort of expertise, financing, the hardware part. I think the other big piece we haven't touched on is data and visibility in order to make decisions and to take action against it. So Sue, do you want to speak a little bit to that one? Yeah, fantastic. Um, I absolutely um, focus on data. So if we're looking at 
making improvements. You can't improve without measuring. So data is absolutely critical, and looking at the data strategy that's driving um, you know, the platform and the foundation. And if you think of visualization, so I always have this term that you could have an avalanche of Power BI, you know, because there's so many dashboards and things and metrics that you're reviewing. So I'm delighted um, in Fidelma's uh, keynote that's later this morning, the HPE GreenLake platform and Project IT Sustainability Dashboard is going to deliver those insights for our customers and partners. So looking at energy consumption, carbon emissions, and electricity costs. If you think about line of business now and cross-charge, so I call that FinOps, so looking at how you're charging back into line of business for what they're consuming, that again gives you that ability to do so. The acquisition of OpsRamp that Antonio um, mentioned yesterday as well in his keynote is absolutely critical for us too because you need to manage multi-vendor infrastructure. It's not just HPE gear. So I think these are the things, if you start looking at building that maturity of that map and on the floor outside as well, we've got the sustainability um, demo area. But you know, to me, this is unique. This is something that will enable us to drive that visualization for our customers and partners to act and do something about it. Absolutely. I think the public cloud has been a great accelerator of sustainability, but there's this multi-gen hybrid IT reality that we're living in, and we need to pull it all together and give our customers the insight and the visibility and the actionability all in one place, and that's what the dashboard will deliver. So Jerry, back to you. We need to have sort of an end-to-end -end strategy, right? From design, operation, ends of life, to optimize the asset life cycle and the reuse of assets. Can you talk a little bit about more how a little bit more about how HPE can help there? Absolutely. So we talked about financing, right? So we talked about helping to accelerate people onto a more sustainable model. But the point really is here, and you've all been saying it in different ways, there's it's really powerful to keep technology assets in, the, in circulation for as long as possible, keeping it in the circle, reusing it. Recycling's great, don't get me wrong, but reusing it, extending its life, that's a higher level. That's more environment, environmental savings for us. So there are so many things that we can do that are tangible next steps to help you have both sustainable and economic reuse. Think about it, you said um, taking assets out. If you no longer need your assets, those are the older assets that Krista just convinced you it's time to move on. We can take those assets out, we can upcycle them, we give them a refresh, and we give them, they go out to a second life. We monetize that for you, and hopefully 50% or more is going back into your budget. If you're already using those, you're still using assets, and you're not ready to get rid of them, we can help you migrate to a GreenLake model. And we help you migrate there, we can also monetize those assets that you currently own, help you migrate to a GreenLake model, which traditionally we're seeing has a 30% total cost of ownership savings, as well as an environmental savings of 30%. And then we can look a little in the reverse, now you have applications, some that are really new with all that latest and greatest, and some which are older, where you can leverage certified pre-owned, where now you're taking advantage of keeping products in the circle a little bit longer at a lower cost point, again, extending your budget. And to the points that, and actually, Suna, we had a great conversation right before we kicked this off, and, and you just brought this up around transparency and data. We can do all of that in providing a circular economy report that gives complete transparency to what you've done, how much you have reused versus recycled, uh, and what the environmental savings are, which is really critical. If you can't measure, you can't manage. And just to give you uh, what I like to call a few fun factoids as to what that's resulted in for us, do you know that last year we have moved and managed over 3.6 million technology assets? And as we talked about, and you talked about, about multi-vendor, these are not just HPE, these are multi-vendor assets. And we love to use this number. If I was wearing my, uh, my little identifier, I'd have a little pin here that says, when we take a look at all of the solutions that we put together last year, we in essence infused $1.3 million back to our customers every working day of last year. That's not insignificant. 
And then finally, and something I'm really proud of, when we take a look at our servers and PCs and where we have brought them back into our tech renewal centers, between 90 and 95% of all of those technology assets, we are able to put back into reuse. So we can really make collectively working together a tangible difference. About 90 to 95%. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Don't quote me, but I think the average sort of e-waste reuse figure globally is well below 20%. So that's incredible that you're putting that much back out onto the market. Right into the market. All right, so we're actually going to jump into Q&A now, but rather than take questions from the audience, we've decided to have a little bit of fun with what we're going to do today. So we have solicited some questions from the future's best and brightest. So let's take a look at the first question. How do we convince people that help saving our environment is not a choice, but a responsibility? Yeah, absolutely. So Sune, do you want to take this one? It's not a choice, it's a responsibility for us to take action. I, I think I'll take an offset in what I said just before, right, speaking with my peers in the industry. So if we go years back, I think this was something that we tried to hold on to our companies. But as Antonio said here uh, at the beginning of our session, right, this is something that we need to work into what we do. This sustainability is not how we run our business. It is our business in the future. And I think it's visible for all of us when we look around the world that we need to act on this, right? The world is changing. And thankfully, we have all of those young talents out there. Mm -hmm. They simply don't want to come work with us if we are not sustainable and if we don't push that needle on the agenda. So I think it's obvious for those of us that works with it. And if you don't yet, go work with it. And you are going to be the best ambassador out there for, for doing something about it. Yeah, so we're doing it you know, for future generations, but we're also doing it because it's a business imperative for us to do it. This isn't sort of a philanthropic thing that we're doing anymore, right? All right, I think we have time for another question. Let's hop across the pond to Philip. What potential do we see for AI in helping to drive sustainability? Perfect, the inevitable AI question. Sue, do you want to tackle it? Yeah, so I think, again, another passion area for me with AI, and I'm going to, take, I'm going to respond to this with AI for good, because I think there's so many different use cases out there in how we can achieve um, you know, being a force for good. If I think of um, the medical pharmaceuticals, so accelerating patient outcomes, looking at um, diagnosis of disease earlier, and there's numerous examples that you're seeing in the news. Uh, one recently with um, identifying breast cancer, with you know, reducing the impact of the human eye, looking at the scans, and then with um, AI and ML, driving those outcomes for patients. I think also on the environment from an agricultural point of view, and that's why I love your uh, heat reuse as well, because I'm seeing that in the agricultural environments for things with AI and robotics as well. So there are numerous use cases on AI and being a force for good. Great, thank you, Sue. I think we've got time for one more. How do you prioritize what you focus on in regards to sustainability? This is a question we get a lot. Yeah. So Krista, do you want to try this one? Yeah, so um, we really look at what the biggest levers are, what's going to make the biggest change, um, and also what we have the most control over. There's so many things that you can work on, but in terms of prioritizing, it's all about what the biggest levers are, what we have the most control over, and what customers are open to accept. So if it comes to designing products, you can't cut the performance by 90% and think that that's gonna be a product customers are going, going to wanna buy. So we have to take that into account as well. Absolutely. And then something that we are hearing from customers, I heard it all day at Executive Summit yesterday, is where do I start? You're all in very different places on your sustainable IT journey. Some of you have a sustainable IT strategy, many of you do not. And so I think Ackley has a little bit of advice for everyone in the room. It starts with one person to make big change. And it's kind of like a domino effect, where if one person does it, more and more people start doing it, and then we have a healthier environment. Good for her. Yeah, kudos to the kids. I like that they ask the hard, direct questions and get to the point. Um, and it's important for all of us in this room to remember why we are focusing on sustainability as a key pillar of our strategy. Yes, it's our responsibility, as we heard in the first question, but it also provides tremendous business, business benefits for us as well. So as we wrap this up, I have one more question for each of you. 
If you could leave the audience here with one piece of advice, what would it be? For me, it's uh, put it at the top of your agenda. It's going to be good business, and it's going to be something that your customers are rewarding you with, not just now, but in the years to come. Those who comes first actually have the best pathway forward, right? So uh, get started. I think every day is a learning day. So it's a transformational journey that you know I've personally been on. So I'd encourage you all to go and learn and to look at the superheroes in your organizations to really make an impact and drive change for good. I love that. And then, and then take that one level further and start thinking about your job more broadly. Think about what you do as not only what you're doing today, but also as a climate job. And if you start to internalize that and think about that every day as you're creating your priorities, it's going to change an awful lot. And I have to tell you to something you said, Suna, um, we are finding that colleagues, employees want to work for us because we are focusing on sustainability. We, that is one of the reasons all generations are doing it. And by the way, for the older generations, I had somebody say to me they want to work for us because their children said, this is a good place. Yeah. I love that. Guilt is a great strategy. Yeah. Well, it's funny. It reminds me of um, something that really resonated with me. I read this book called Speed and Scale by John Doerr. I don't know if anybody's read it here, but it's a fantastic book about getting to net zero. And something that really resonated with me is basically said the world's total emissions are the sum of billions of business decisions about how we power buildings, how we make products, and how we get them to customers. So to get to zero, every business leader needs to factor in carbon to those business decisions. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would pass along. I thought that resonated a lot with me, and it really succinctly um, really describes what we all need to be thinking about. Yeah, and to all of your points, I get an email from an employee, if not every day, at least every week, that says, I want to join the sustainability team. What courses do I need to take? What can I do? And my answer is, stay in your job and contribute to our sustainability strategy, doing exactly what you're doing, because it will take every person in every part of our business to reach our net zero goal. So I want to thank the panelists. Thank all of you for being here. If I can ask you to do one thing when you leave here today, it's to think back to the exercise that I had you do quickly at the beginning of this, where I asked you to think about the actions that you are and could be taking to optimize the energy use and the environmental impact of your IT estate. And there's a ton of content across Discover, hopefully you've seen, that can help answer some of those questions. So please explore our sustainability demo area on the show floor. Uh, attend. There's numerous sessions, including we mentioned Fidelma's right after this, that are going to be featuring sustainability. And then we also have our sustainable IT experts in the meeting center that are happy to meet with you directly on your own sustainable IT strategies. And then if you have any questions for me or the panel, we will be just outside in the meet and greet area on the left after this to take any questions. So thank you all for joining us today.